Hi crafters and welcome, my name is Philippa and welcome to my complete guide to craft fairs. In this video we are going to look at types of fairs and considerations you have to make deciding on which one to go to. We are then going to look at things to do one month before, two weeks before and the night before. I have a very full checklist that is going to be available as a PDF in the description below for a nominal cost. This is part one of my series. In part two, you will look at my setup and display. We will then talk about what to do on the day. You will come with me to my very first craft fair with my felts, and then we will look at what went well and why. I have done 80 to 100 craft fairs already, selling jewelry for a jewelry company, but this is the first time I'm going to go and sell my felts. So, please do come along with me. If you are a regular of my felting series and tutorials, don't worry, I will be back. This is just part of my business series, helping you if you want to take your business further and earn money doing something you love. So types of events that you can go to. Um, craft fairs, church fairs, school fairs, pamper evenings, Christmas markets, Easter's ma Easter markets, farmers markets. There's all sorts of types of events. You can find a lot of them online. You apply normally through email to the organiser and they will probably ask you what stall you have and then um, they will see if they have any spaces. Prices vary in the UK, because this is what I'm familiar with, from £10 to a very small school fair, all the way up to the big events that could be at least 100, 150 a day, and normally go over several days. I do recommend that if you are new, you go to a much smaller event, because the big craft fairs are incredibly hard work. Things you're gonna need to consider for the events, are they indoors or outdoors is normally your starter point. If they are outdoors, your startup cost is going to be higher. You are going to need a gazebo if it's outdoors. If you can't borrow one, you're gonna to have to buy one. You also are gonna need your tables. Normally if it's outdoors, they don't provide tables at all. And you are going to be very much controlled by the weather. If it rains, the attendance will be lower. If it's windy, you have to hold on to your gazebo and your products might get blown around. And if it's sunny, it's really hot, you're going to have to be under a gazebo for shade. If it's indoors, sometimes, well you don't need a gazebo, sometimes they might even supply you with a table. So an indoors event could be cheaper all round as a starter point. Now the event itself, if you haven't been before and don't know what it's like, you're going to ask the organiser some questions. Um, what's the footfall? How many people do they normally anticipate going? Especially if it's been going for a few years, they should know. How many stall holders are going in all? I mean, is it going to be 200 stall holders? In which case, it's going to be quite busy and it's a bit manic for setup. Um, what types of stall holders are going? Such as, are there any ones similar to your stall? If there are 10 other felters going, it might affect my sales. It's something I'd rather know before I go. And the organiser, if they're asking what you do and trying to control the amount of jewellery stands or soap stands, that's really quite a good thing. If you can visit the venue before you go, that's fantastic. It's not always possible. The one we're going to go and do is um, done every month, so I managed to go and I also sort of cased it out and realised I didn't want my stand to be near the door because the door goes straight outside on a big barn and my items would have been blown over. So I've sorted that out already. So if you can go to the event, that's great. So you've signed up, you've paid, let's prepare for the event. Things you're gonna have to do one month before. It's a really good idea to sort out card payments because you'll miss out on a big part of the market otherwise. I use a thing called iZettle. It's a little card machine, people put their card in the bottom and it links to an app on my phone. That cost me £29. It takes a 2% charge off the cards. I would rather do it than not. There are many other things out there. You could even do PayPal where people send money to your email via its business email. So that's possible and they could do that on the day. Do try and work out some form of card payment. Do you need to take a table? If you are outdoors and under a gazebo, you will definitely have to take your own tables. Um, do you want one table? Do you want two in the shape of an L? Do you want three in the shape of a U? How are you going to set it out in your gazebo and make it inviting for people to come in? Um, where do you want your till? 
where do you want your money where are you going to sit because even though I don't recommend sitting all day at some points of the day you're going to have to sit down where are you going to stop store all your stock quite often under a gazebo I like to put my table halfway across so that people if it rains will come and stand inside and then I've got a space behind it as well the gazebo itself is a big consideration if you get a little pop-up one you can put those up on your own if no one's come with you but the bigger ones that are much sturdier they're definitely a two people job are you going to have weights on it you can also instead of buying actual weights or sandbags a lot of people fill large bottles of water and hang it off um, the metal parts at the top so that keeps it weighed down or extra ties to keep it um, into the ground and that will help secure it have you got enough stock this is one month before start ordering stock if you need it or start making things now get it done the sooner the better because the panic towards the last few days is not good advertising materials um, I have business cards and they just have my details on the back they're vista print really simple um, brochures or little flyers banners um, I have a big banner that you're going to see in a bit when I do my setup. I love it because it's portable and I can move it around. Other types of banners, a lot of people put them down the front of the stool and that's okay, but if someone stands in front of your stool, your banner is blocked straight away. So it's great if the banner can go up high and it's large and people can see it from afar. Um, start planning your display now we are one month before so you can start looking on pinterest and working out how you are going to lay it out there's absolutely tons of examples out there and that's the best way to do it is to get inspiration and it doesn't have to be expensive um i will go through stacking shelves in a minute do you want an, a website do you want to be on Etsy or Shopify or make sure you've got an Instagram account how are people going to contact you if they like your stuff and couldn't buy on the day if you have no way of them contacting you or seeing your products I suggest you do try and do something Instagram's great because it's free and you can set it up put some photos and they can message you on there do you want electricity on your stand? If you have lights or if you have something you need to plug in, try and let the organiser know earlier because they need to place you near a plug. Tablecloth, plain, in my opinion, is best. I have a completely plain one. Uh, but if you have a pattern and it goes with your stock and your, your designs, that's absolutely fine if it works for you. Um, but make sure your tablecloth is large because it has to go sort of that far off the ground at the front to cover everything up. You don't want people seeing all your uh, boxes and stock and your feet <laughs> when you're sitting there. And also my um, tablecloth is sort of, it hangs out really well and doesn't show the creases. It's not suede but it's quite heavy. Um, so if you can get something that doesn't show the creases, that works well as well. And also, you might need some clips to clip on. Uh, if it's windy, the tablecloth will be going everywhere, so some little clips are good. How are you going to create height? Um, basically, you've paid for the table, but you can double your money by making sure you display upwards. And if you don't display upwards, you're missing out on an awful lot because as humans, we're quite lazy and we walk around and we look at our eye level. Um, supermarkets know this, they put all the best deals on the shelves at our eye level. If somebody sees something they like at eye level on your stand, they will then come over and then they will be encouraged to look down and to look at the rest of your stuff. So ways in which to create height are uh, stacking boxes. I have some boxes here, which I will show you in a bit. Um, shelves, people even put a chair on a table, instant height. So how are you going to create height? And if you do have something that creates height, does it stack or fold away? That works really well. And then one other thing we've really got to think about a month before is you are going to need business insurance, public liability insurance. If someone falls over your tent wire or if your gazebo blows away in the wind and damages a car, you are going to be liable for it. So you need insurance. I'm a member of a felting association and they do a group insurance. So it was half the price of me trying to get it individually. So if you are a member of any craft organization, inquire and ask and see if they do. Um, 
most fares want to see the insurance certificate or at least the insurance certificate number. So you are probably going to have to have that. And to give you an idea in the UK for myself as an individual, I was quoted around £80 uh, in 2020 when this video was made and I actually got it for £42 through my crafting association. So we've done the one month before, let's move on to two weeks before, things you're going to have to consider. Um, this is a really big one, get out your display and practice it and I mean it because it will really give you a lot of confidence on the day. It also means that you can take a picture of it once it's done so it's on your phone or I've got a little table planner so you can mark out on the table planner where things go. This also works really well if someone's coming with you to help you unload and put stuff out because you can give them the table planner or show them the picture. So please, 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 out of everything I say, get card payment and practice your display. Um, get a float together now, don't leave that till the last minute and you end up going to the little tiny shop on the corner because unfortunately all the shops and the banks are shut. And also when you get your float together, if you are selling something at £12.50, get lots of 50p's because obviously you're going to be needing to give the appropriate change. Um, you also try and get lots of fives and tens, that's sort of the currency in the UK, but lots of dollar, lots of bills in your currency because sometimes you do get stall holders who are desperate and they come over and ask if you've got any change. Um, the first person of the day might give you a really big note and you might be out of all your change otherwise. So do consider getting quite a few notes. Um, check your card reader works. Uh, I just did a little, because we haven't used this for a short while, I just did a little one pound transaction and I lost two P, that's not a problem. And the money, the rest of it goes into our bank account anyway. So it's good to have a little practice and be confident. And also if someone's coming with you and they need to use it, try and teach them before the day rather than on the day. Start to advertise on social media where you are going, um, on Facebook, Instagram, to try and get those regulars that really like you if they live nearby to come. And also tell friends and family. If friends and family come, it's great on the day because they can help you a little bit. You can pop to the toilet. And also don't make them sit all around the back, stick them around the front of the stall and make your stall look really busy because people love it. They go, what's going on over there? And they come on over. So make them do some work and stand out the front. Uh, work out how you're gonna carry everything. If you've got quite a lot of stuff, do you need a little trolley to get it from your car to the actual um, where your gazebo is or are you able to drive your car upright close? Sometimes that's something you're gonna ask the organizer. Does it all fit in your car? Check that the table fits in your car. That's a big one. I've got a small car and I have to fold the seats down, but it works. So check before the day. Print out or buy these little um, visa signs. I bought this one, it was like one pound something off Amazon. Um, and lots of things that I've bought, I'm gonna list down below on links to Amazon, so feel free to have a look at them. But that's great, people can see that I take it, otherwise they're not gonna know, and a lot of people assume that small market traders won't take cards, that happens an awful lot. Packaging and, paper and bags, how are you gonna let people take things away from you? Do you need to wrap it up in tissue paper, in bubble wrap? Um, I just buy some brown plastic ba uh, brown bags, paper bags that I think are um, a good price. And also you could put your um, marketing on the front of it. I also put a little business card inside with every single one. But it's free advertising as people walk around the fair if it's got your name on the outside. So you can get a little ink stamp, that's really cheap, and you can just stamp each one. I'm going to do, I always say that people should price their items, we'll go through that in a little sec, so don't forget uh, gift tags or um, price tags, get them now, it takes me a while to write them out, so I try and write them out a lot before the day, because if you think, oh yeah, I'll just do it on the day, you get there, and there might be a lot of people and it might be really, really busy, so try and do them before the day and have them ready. Um, should you price your items? So this is what I said. I say the long and short is yes, because I don't walk into a shop and ask the shop owner the price of every single top. I would be actually quite embarrassed if I had to do that all the time. And if I was a shy person, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, also, if you're talking to people and you miss somebody who can't um, get to you, 
they then know the prices without having to ask, otherwise you might miss a sale. I am going to do a separate video on how to price your craft items because I do get asked this an awful lot and there's a little bit of a process to it. It's a very personal thing, but I will just let you know how I price my items. I have a checklist that um, is going to be in the PDF of loads of things. So two weeks before, print out or write out your own checklist or print out my checklist. I've done it all for you, so you don't have to do all the hard work. Um, and start going through it two weeks before. Don't do it the night before. So just to give you a rough idea of some of it, because I hate these videos going on for too long. Things you're gonna need is a float, and I put my float in a bum bag, or you can have a little cute apron and put everything in there. If you leave your stool, take your bum bag with you, take your money with you. Don't ever leave your stool with the money. Don't, and I'm not being rude about the people next door to you, but it's not up to them to look after your money. Um, calculator, notebook and pens, you might want to take custom orders. Um, scissors, sellotape strings, safety pins, chalkboard mirror clips, because you might need to clip your banner up high, so those crocodile clips are really good. Um, card reader and the signage for the card reader, phone charger, food and drink. This is really important. If you don't take food, it's fine, you will survive, but you will probably end up spending a good £10 on food at the fair, and you're going to this fair to make money I say take a pat lunch and maybe go and treat yourself, if you feel that you can, to some fudge or some sweets or something. Take your own drink as well because queuing up for cups of teas and coffees takes out a lot of time from your day, it costs you money. Also I love to get there, set up and then I sit down and have a cup of tea and I'm ready to greet everybody and if I have my tea in a flask with me, yes I know, it's an, old person things to do have a flask of tea but I love it but have water have drink whatever you will be talking to people a lot even if you don't sell stuff you are going to be talking and your throat will get dry so take some drink uh, mints are also handy so that when you eat your lunch you can just pop a mint in if you end up going out from behind your table and start talking to people table coverings decorations bunting I use some bunting business cards, flyers, a large banner, extension cable if you do need electricity because you might not be that close to it, duct tape to tape it to the floor, your display items, trolley, insurance certificate, car parking pass if needed at the event, you would have been sent one by the organiser, the name of the organiser or at least the email on your phone, uh, priceless displays, especially if you are grouping things together, um, so you've got a load of scrunchies, you're not going to label them individually, you're going to have a sign at the front, Chalk, mini chalkboards are really handy for that because um, you can change the prices, coat to keep warm because it's normally quite cold in the morning, chair, I will always take a chair even though I will say don't sit on it all day, you, you need to sit down at some point, take a small bin bag and also um, go round your stall and check it every now and again and also have a look at it from afar make sure it all looks okay but if someone's dropped orange peel by your stall it might stop people from coming over so do check your stall um, if you're outside sometimes it's great just to have a plastic cover to throw over your items if it starts to rain really suddenly so you know that especially if they're delicate they're all safe a uh, clipboard to collect emails on good shoes um, the ground may be wet early in the morning, so maybe a bit of plastic to put your boxes on because there's always morning dew and you arrive and you put your boxes, you get your boxes out of your car because that's how you've put them in with probably the table at the bottom and it's all damp and wet and you've got no table to put them on. So a bit of plastic is really handy. Uh, table planner, which I talked about, and then extra promotional items if you want any. So what are these? you could do if you're looking to get people's emails or if you're just looking to get people in you could do a free prize draw and you put a sign up saying free prize draw you're obviously going to have to donate one of your items as the free prize draw and people put their email down and their contact details the only it's very successful the only problem is you have to post the item to them because you would draw it at the end of the day um so that is the only pain, but if you want people's emails in particular, that works very well. Or you could say 10% off today if you sign up to our emails, but then only people that are gonna buy your stuff are gonna do that. 
um, Lucky Dip, 50p a go, or one pound a go. And if you target it towards children, you have to make sure that the items are good for girls and boys. Put it in little bags, put it in a big basket thing. A lot of parents see that, they come over, the children love it, and then you can get talking to the parents. If the items cost you 50p and you sold it for one pound a go, if you sell 40, you'll probably cover the cost of the fare. Um, it did, I have done it before, it does work well. It is a bit of a faff trying to buy all the items and sort it out. The easier thing to that is a small bowl of sweets. Obviously make sure that they are nut and allergy free and just say help yourself to a sweet or if um, a parent comes over and they're talking, their child can have a sweet so they can um, talk to you. So that works well too. Um, or even sell children's toys at the front like teddy bears attached to the front of the stool that could work if you have a cheap item basket say you have items that are two pounds or under do a big sign saying two pound basket make sure people can see it from afar and you will get quite a lot of people come over look at that and then start to look at your other things right the night before and we will do this really quickly because i so sorry that these videos go on but i have got so much to tell you and so many important points and details so the night before you can load your car if it's safe to do so if you have a garage and your car's inside maybe try and load it all up if your car's parked in the street you could possibly just put a couple of the heavy items like the table in so it just saves you a bit of work in the morning pack everything in the boxes together and place it all in a pile in the same area so you know that everything in that area is definitely going I would then confirm directions, date and time. Only once have I turned up on the wrong day. Embarrassing. And then also check the weather. Is the weather good? Is it possibly going to be really bad? I have probably not gone to two events. It's up to you. You will lose out on money. And normally the events aren't actually cancelled by the organiser unless it was heavy snow. So, if it is really bad weather, you don't always have to go, but you could miss out. And then also make sure you know your uh, setup time. I take an hour, it actually only takes me 30 minutes, but I allow traffic and also unloading time because when you get to an event, loads of people are unloading at the same time and it can be a bit chaotic. Uh, if you are new, at least two hours or definitely your setup time plus some extra time if, if your um, items are quite tricky to lay out and take you longer try and adjust the time accordingly check your checklist again make sure you've ticked everything off and make a packed lunch try and go to bed at a normal time if not earlier and get a good night's sleep I really recommend that you don't do any making or creating or crafting the day before try and keep your head clear so that's the end of the first part the next part of my video we are going to go through um, setup and display what to do on the day and you're going to come with me and then we're going to have a little debrief about how it all went I hope you'll join me on part two and thank you so much and the PDF is in the um, description below